read, verse, beginning at uh, verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord, for me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For when I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God my, by faith, that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. Yes, yes. And the fellowship mm -hmm. of his sufferings. Being conformed to his death. If by any means I may again, that, that I may attain rather, to the resurrection from the dead. Amen. amen. Blessings, amen, upon the reading of his word. Amen, amen. amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Amen. 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 Bless the name of the Lord in this place. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world certainly can't take it away. That's our theme song for this series of messages. Amen. Still standing. Amen. And I trust that that is your testimony. Amen. It certainly was Paul's testimony that he is still standing. And you can see the elements of joy uh, throughout the pages of this letter. Amen. It's not because of the circumstances, because you see that he was under house arrest. Yes. What it was that he was facing and going through were not pleasant situations. However, in the midst of it all, yet he still found joy. And you'll see the word joy throughout the pages of this uh, book, this letter. And you'll see other joy words such as rejoice. Um, I mean, he's constantly making it clear that he is glad, that he is Joyous joy can follow us around in spite of our circumstances. We can wear a smile on our faces in the midst of hard times. And that's what God would have us to learn from this series of messages, that we can still stand. No matter what it is we face in life, I know sometimes that we are waiting for the perfect opportunity for us to just blossom and to light up like a light bulb. Uh, but it's not always in the pleasant times. Uh, yes, for a flower to bloom, mm -hmm. it has to go through uh, the torture of turning the soil. Yes. Uh, if you want for things to grow well, sometimes you have to put stinky fertilizer in the ground. All right. And it will ultimately cause it to have the nitrites and all the stuff that it needs in order for it to grow and get the oxygen and so forth. Uh, it's not always in the most pleasant that we can find ourselves blooming. Mm. Uh, although we would love uh, for everything to be uh, 
perfect and calm, but God would show his disciples on a storm-tossed sea mm -hmm. that he is in charge even there when he would tell the wind and the waves to be still. Yeah. And so this morning, um, this Resurrection Sunday morning as we would celebrate Jesus Christ, we want to thank God for those of you watching. Amen. We can see those uh, who are watching from week to week. Blessings be upon you. Amen. And welcome to uh, the worship. Amen. Um, at some point, many of us have become familiar with the idea and school of thought that it's not always what you know, uh, sometimes it's who you know. Amen. And I know that somewhere along the line, down through the years, we have often uh, watched lesser qualified individuals get the job. Uh, we've watched less knowledgeable individuals didn't know as much as you or one of your co-workers knew about the job, get the promotion. Sometimes we watch individuals who were less disciplined individuals mm. get the leadership position all right. mm. yeah, yeah. Or because of who they knew. Mm -hmm. uh, as discouraging, that might feel like being on the losing end of that scenario. There is another scene that allows uh, the whosoever will crowd uh, to get to know the right person. No matter what neighborhood you grew up in, no matter who mom or daddy was, no matter what prestigious university you attended, all of us have an equal opportunity to get to know this individual. Um, the greatest power broker in town. Yes, his name yes. is Jesus. Yes. Yes. yes, and so my brothers and sisters this morning, I, I want to share with you what Paul saw here in the text. And so from this third chapter, the first 11 verses, amen, we find our message for this morning, joy in knowing Jesus. Yes. And if we are to find the kind of joy in knowing Jesus, uh, there are at least three things that Paul will teach us this morning out of the pages of his own life uh, that would help us to experience joy no matter what it is that we face in life, no matter what conditions we find ourselves in. We can still stand. The first thing that he would share with us is that if we are to be able to remain standing in life's tough moments, in the tough times that we would face along the way, we must resist. That, that's how we can continue to stand. That's how we can maintain a level of joy in our lives, mm -hmm. is that we must learn to resist those who would prevent us from knowing him. Uh, look at how he would share it with us in that first verse. Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. He is sharing one of those joy words with us. He's mm -hmm. in, inciting joy in our hearts and in our lives. He said, and for me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. He says, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather be redundant uh, than have you to miss out on something right. that can bring joy in your life. And so he would repeat the cause. He would share with us, uh, yes, this message that if we are to maintain our joy, then we ought to do as we would see those signs that are posted in some folks' yard. Beware of the hawks. Beware of the hawks. Uh, that, that's how 
we are to maintain our joy. Yes, nothing like a, a, a dog on the loose that bites. Yes, to steal our joy. If you would run into a dog and he's growling and his teeth are, are showing and uh, he backs up into one of those little stands that, that, that looks like he's about to attack, um, that'll take your joy. Yes. Yes, it can cause you to suddenly uh, wonder what is next on the horizon. Where is a stick that I can pick up and grab? Uh, yes, what can I do to tame this wild beast that is facing me? Come on. And so he would choose a word like beware of dogs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to make the emphasis on how important it is for us to be cognizant of our surroundings, those whom we would hang out with. Dogs are oftentimes seen as pets, and many times they are. Yes, dogs are oftentimes referred to as man's best friend. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I, I know some of us have these little small dogs that we have indoors oh, yeah. that we allow to run around the house. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and so a lot of times we have a nice view of dogs. Some would count them as part of the family, extended family members. Uh, and they get just as upset when they lose a pet yes. as they do when they lose a loved one. Can I get a witness? Yes. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, truth be told, dogs can also be very vicious. Yes, there are some yards when I would do my jogging and running uh, that I run past and the dog would come up and he'll bark a little bit. Yes, but you ain't worried about that dog. Fence is only yay high, but you ain't worried about that dog. Well, well. Yes, but there are some other dogs. Uh, yes, the fence is way up here. Yes, uh, but when they come running to the fence and growling and so forth, uh, yes, you take notice of that dog and you let them know that you're not afraid so they can back down off of you. Well, yes, uh, there are some dogs, yes. yes, that are trained to be guard dogs. Uh, yes, that if you are uh, trying to break in, if you're trying to steal, or you're trying to harm its master, yes, uh, it will attack and get you off of them or off of the property. Yes, uh, there are some dogs uh, that some of us are familiar with, uh, yes, from the neighborhood, yes, that were trained, uh, yes, to be fight dogs. I know that that's, that got that got my big in into trouble, amen. Uh, and off the NFL for a, a while, uh, yes. Uh, but the truth is that there are some dogs like that, uh, yes. Uh, and, and my brothers and sisters, it is the latter, yes. It's these vicious dogs that that Paul is trying to share and get our attention about. Yes, uh, and Paul's not the only one who would make reference to dogs to make a point. Yes, uh, as we would speak in relationship to this day. Yes, the resurrection of Christ. Uh, yes, Psalms 22, 16. Yes, would we'll share this with us. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Uh, that all sound familiar to you on today. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. Prophetically, he would speak of the coming of Christ and what they would do to him on his way to Calvary. Yes, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 22 verse 15 would share this this way but outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters yes. and whoever loves and practices a lie yes uh, uh, Psalms 119 number 119 verse 115 would say it like this 
Depart from me, you evil doers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Yes, yes. Uh, my brothers and sisters, he would stop here, pause long enough to make the point that there are some folk in life that are worth avoiding. Uh, yes, uh, not in terms of sharing the gospel with them. Uh, yes, because we all share the good news of the glory of the coming Savior with all folk, uh, whether we like them or not, whether they're easy on the eyes or not, whether or not uh, they're easy to hang out with or not. Yes, uh, whether or not they make us laugh or they make us cry, we ought to be ready to share the good news uh, of Jesus Christ with them. Yes, uh, but when it comes to hanging out with folk, uh, yes, uh, placing them in our inner circle, yes, there are some folk, uh, yes, uh, that, that would make us more miserable than that. There are some folk that would try, yes, best they could, uh, yes, to, to ruin and damper our day. Yes. yes, there are some folk that walk around, uh, yes, as if they have a kite on the string just bringing clouds with them everywhere they go. Uh, and God, God would have us to know that if you want to keep your joy, yes, if you want to know Jesus, Yes, in a personal kind of way. Yes, there are some individuals uh, who are like vicious dogs. Yes, uh, and he would make reference here in the text uh, to the Judaizers. Uh, yes, some of us are familiar with that group, that crowd uh, of individuals who were trying to force individuals to, to maintain uh, the rituals of the law. They were more interested in circumcision of the flesh than they were interested in circumcision of the heart. Yes, uh, the Judaizers uh, were bound by yesterday. Uh, yes, uh, mm, look at verse 3. He says, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, uh, and have no confidence in the flesh. Our joy, yes, uh, it comes from knowing Jesus. Our joy comes from the relationship we, we, that we have in him. Uh, it's a spiritual circumcision that God would leave with you and I. Yes, God would rather that we would have circumcision of the, the heart, uh, yes, than the flesh. Mm. But Judaizers, those individuals, evildoers that he would speak of in that second verse, uh, Yes, they're, they're individuals who are trying uh, to trap us in tradition rather than elevate us, yes, uh, in the risen Savior. Can I get a witness? Amen. Yes, he says resist. If we are to maintain our joy, we are to resist those who would prevent us from knowing him. Yes, yes uh, while wow, they would have us, uh, yes, exercising every prudent tradition, uh, yes, that had been passed down since Moses, uh, yes, uh, they're not all that anxious in allowing us to receive the liberty that is found in Christ Jesus. And then he says, uh, secondly, uh, if we are to have joy in knowing Jesus, says if we are to remain standing in our faith we've got to release we've got to release things that would prevent us from knowing him um, there later in that third verse at the end he says and have no confidence in the flesh there are some things that we've got to let go of We've been holding on to them tightly. Yes. Uh, um, you know we had in the church this old saying uh, that whenever somebody would come with a new suggestion, yes, uh, whenever somebody, uh, yes, would share a new vision, a new idea, something that can be done uh, 
That I would be that old saint uh, in the business meeting who would raise a hand and say, but we've always done it this way before. Can I get witness? Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, there, there'll always be those individuals who are who are clinging on to stuff that has, uh, yes, no kingdom value. Yes, no lasting purpose. Uh, yes, but they're still hanging on to them anyhow. You remember the story about Big Mama, don't you? Uh, yes, uh, and uh, her grandbaby who grew up, uh, yes, uh, under her, watching her, yes, uh, uh, make the ham each year. Yes, uh, and she would watch Big Mama make the ham and, and, and she would cut the end off of the ham, uh, yes, uh, and set it to the side. All right. Year after year, uh, she would do that. Uh, and so the girl grew up, yes, and now she's grown and she's, uh, yes, making her own ham. Uh, and, and as she makes the ham, every year she cuts off the end uh, and set it to the side, uh, yes, and get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and, and so her, her children uh, decided to ask her this valuable question. Uh, yes, uh, you know food ain't cheap. Uh, yes, uh, and they said, uh, why is it that you cut off part of the ham and get rid of it? Uh, and she starts scratching her head. She says, well, this is great. This is Big Mama's recipe. Uh, yes, and, 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 and I always saw her do it that way. Yes, uh, and so I picked up the habit, I picked up the, sink, the ingredients and, and the glaze and all of that, and I, I just done it the way she done it, it tastes good, and so I just kept doing it. <laughs> but it, it, it made her curious enough to go back to Big Mama. She went back to Big Mama and she said, uh, you know, when you would cook the ham each year, you would cut off the end. Yes, before you cook the ham. Uh, right. Yes. Uh, why is it that you would cut off the end? She said, baby, uh, that's just the biggest pot that I had to cook with, uh, and it wouldn't fit in there. Uh, that'll hit you on the freeway on your way home. <laughs> I mean, this, 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 this girl grew up throwing away good ham. Yes. Uh, because she was just following the tradition and didn't really understand why she was following the tradition. Yes, uh, we cannot get God's grace so long as we are operating in fleshly works. Yes, God is trying to give us everything that we need. Yes, uh, but sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we insist on clinging to what is familiar to us. Yes, the stuff that we grew up with. Yes, whether or not it has value or not, yes, doesn't always matter. Sometimes uh, we're hanging on to the crew that we grew up with, uh, even though we grew apart from them. Uh, yes, we started going to church. Uh, they were still shooting dice. Can I get away with it? Yes, uh, we started uh, working. Uh, yes, they were still hanging out. Uh, yes, drinking a fork. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Yes, uh, we grew in separate ways, uh, yeah, but we yeah. found ourselves trying to hold on to that which is most familiar to us. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we cannot receive what God is doing in the now if we are bound by our yesterdays. Yes, uh, I, I know uh, we all not forget where we come from. Yes, but don't misinterpret that saying. Uh, yes, to suggest that somehow or another we are bound by where we come from. Yes, we can stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. Uh, yes, uh, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, many of my mentors uh, expected me to do more and bigger things than what they did. Can I get a witness? Yes, yes uh, as we invest in others, we want them to excel. We want them to 
to exceed, yes, and do greater things, yes, and God is looking for us, yes, to climb on the mountains where he is leading us next. We must release in order to receive. And so he says in the text, have no confidence in the flesh. You heard him mention uh, and rattle off all of the things uh, in verse 5 and 4 uh, that he grew up with, that he felt made him, yes, uh, uh, somebody, right. yes, circumcised, the eighth day. You can see it right there in the text. You just follow along all the, those things that he felt made him into something. At the end of the day, he wound up saying that he counts them as rubbish. rubbish. When he looks at who Jesus Christ is and he looked at who he was, uh, yes, in order for him to get Yes, the mercy of God we talked about on last week uh, and the grace of God, uh, yes, that's found in the text. Uh, yes, we've got to count as rubbish, uh, yes, some of the things that we value most. He valued the zeal that he had that would lead him to persecute the church. It was zeal but it was not according to knowledge. From his upbringing, he thought that he was on God's side, that he was doing God a favor by persecuting the church, but it was not until God would knock him down on the road to Damascus, take away his vision, yes, temporarily, so that he could ultimately get new vision that he would realize, uh, yeah, that he was on the wrong road, that he was on the wrong track. Yes, yes. We ought to get, there are some things we've got to release. If, if, we are, if we are to get money from 401k or some type of savings account, bonds or stocks, We've got to release something and invest it before we can get something back. We've got to release those things that would prevent us from knowing him. Let me hurry on to a close. i got one last point here. Um, I want to share with you this. We've got to renew. We've got to renew. We talked in chapter 2 about our minds and how important and how valuable the mind plays a part in our maintaining joy in our lives. We've got to renew our minds, renew our vision, our purpose. In the end of verse 8, he says, that I may gain Christ. That's his, that's his purpose and goal, is that he might gain Christ. If we want to have joy in knowing Jesus, yes, um, we've got to reinvigorate our goal to know him, to gain him. Uh, in verse 9 he says, and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. You see, heretofore Paul was trying to gain righteousness by the keeping and observance of the law. And God would make clear that there was nothing wrong with the law, but there was a problem with the individual who was trying to keep the law on his own or on her own. 
because the law would require us to keep it in totality. That's what that song was trying to get at as it would just scratch the surface. 99 and a half, just want to do. Uh, uh, the suggestion is not that we can make 100 on our own. The, the reality is, is that we cannot get there without him. Amen. Without having faith in Jesus Christ, we would never get or achieve a hundred by ourselves. Adam made sure of that. Mm. Says he wants to have a relationship with God that I may be, that I may know, that I may go. He 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 wants to gain that kind of of affinity, that kind of closeness with Christ in his life. He's come to a place, you look at some individuals as we grow up in life, there are things as you enter into your 50s and your 60s, even in your 40s, you get to your 70s, there's stuff that was important to you when you were 25 that's no longer important. I mean, you thought that you could not live, you could not make it without certain things in your life. And then you grew up. And they're not as important any longer. I look at my parents and the stuff that they let my kids get away with, but they want my case and my brother's case for doing the exact same thing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they have grandkids and the grandkids get away with everything. And I find myself doing the exact same thing with the next generation. Mm. Yes, uh, they can get away with stuff. Because there's something that are not as important as you mature. And that's what Paul is teaching us is that he learned that all of those things that he learned sitting at the feet of Gamaliel with all the many languages that he spoke, there are some things that were rubbish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All he wanted now was that he might gain Christ and be found in him as he would come towards the end of his life, as he would move towards his senior years. Wanted to make sure, as the songwriter would say, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the roll. That, that, that's what was most important for Paul, was this relationship. That's what brought joy in his life. That's what allowed him to not only have joy, but he would pass it on to those at the church of Philippi. He would say, rejoice! There's joy in knowing Jesus. Verse 10. Listen. We've got to renew our relationship with him. He says, that I may know him. I mean, he talks about gaining Christ and being found in him, but, but then he, he turns a little deeper. He, he, he makes the conversation a little bit more personal. He says, that I may know him. And the word that he uses, the word choice, as you know, <coughs> there are multiple words for knowing in the Greek language in which uh, the gospel was written in. Uh, the word that he uses here is not oida, which is related to the eye, but gnosko, um, which is a word that's used for personal acquaintance or experience with. His, his passion is to be able to have personal knowledge. Some of us have seen individuals and we'll say we know them. We, we may have seen them on television. 
and we act as if, you know, they are our best friend. I mean, I, I growing up, I would hear, I would hear Mama and Auntie and then all of them talk about these individuals and so forth. Uh, who was dating somebody else's wife and who was doing this and that. And, uh, and, and I'm listening to them and I'm thinking these are real people. And they were talking about the source. <laughs> Can I get with it? <laughs> but he he does not speak about what he has observed or not even what he has interviewed, but he is speaking about his personal experience, his relationship with Jesus. That I may know him. Then he comes to uh, the, the subject of which we celebrate today, Eva, the power of his resurrection. There is something about the resurrection of Jesus Christ that brings all of us to our feet, that would bring a standing ovation to a job, a life well lived. Jesus Christ came from heaven down. Yes, uh, and he would come and live amongst us and for 30 plus years he would dwell here on planet earth. He would eat, he would drink. Yes, uh, he, he would find himself uh, yes, in uncomfortable predicaments and circumstances but it all came down to this grand finale, this moment when Jesus Christ find himself in Joseph's borrowed tomb. And there he would remain all night Friday. There he would remain all day Saturday. There he would remain uh, until early Sunday morning. He would get up yes, yes. out of that borrowed tomb. Though there were guards who were standing in front of the tomb. Yes, it did not hinder him from getting up from the grave. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, the women would come, yes, to anoint a dead body. Uh, and as they would march towards uh, the tomb where Jesus' body had been buried, uh, they would ponder this question in their mind, rehearsing it between themselves. Uh, they would say, but who will roll away the stone? Yes, uh, their dilemma and difficulty that they had in their minds uh, was how it was that they would get inside the tomb where Jesus' body lie uh, so that they could anoint his body with the ointment. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, but they would be reminded, yes, by the angels of the Lord who would stand waiting to give testimony that he is not here. But he is risen as he said. Yes, yes, yes. When Jesus got up from the grave, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. And that's what Paul is saying here today. He is saying that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That getting up power, that sustaining power. Yes, the importance of discipleship is being tied to a genuine connection with Christ. Not simply a casual relationship, yes, but a true connection with him. Yes, that we would know the power of his resurrection. Uh, yes, I don't know. Yes, but I suspect your life is much like my life. Yes, each and every one of us find ourselves with difficult days at time, dark nights at time. Yes, uh, difficult decisions that we've got to make in life. Yes, but no matter what we would face in life, if your problem is not harder than getting Jesus up from the dead, uh, your problem is not too hard for God. God can handle whatever it is that you're going through in life. Yes. Thank you. Power of his resurrection. That's what Paul wanted to know. Yes, I don't have time for small talk. I don't have time for foolishness. I don't have time, uh, yes, for zeal, not according to that. I don't have time for that. I want to know him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
So that I may know him, the, uh, not only the power of his resurrection, but the fellowship of his suffering. We can grow through suffering. Yes, uh, it's through toil that a butterfly becomes a butterfly. Yes, it's in the process of that struggling uh, to get out of the cocoon, to get out of that shell that would ultimately strengthen it so that when it finally makes its way out, that it can soar through the sky and float as Muhammad Ali would say, like a butterfly. <laughs> can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, it's through our struggles that we find joy. Mm. Yeah. Songwriter said it like this. I've learned how to live holy. Mm. I've learned how to live right. I've learned how to suffer. For if I suffer, I'll gain eternal life. Yes, my brothers and sisters, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid. Your heart does the spirit control. That, that's what the songwriter was asking us. Uh, yes, you can only be blessed uh, and have peace and sweet rest uh, as you yield your body and your soul. I think he was on to something now. Yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, Yes, we ought to allow ourselves to be a living sacrifice. That's what Romans chapter 12, yes, verses 1 through 3 is getting at. Yes, uh, we ought to allow ourselves to be living sacrifices. I got I to gotta sit down now. I went way longer than I intended to go. Yes, uh, he says, if by any means. Yes, uh, um... He, 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 he wants to attain to the resurrection from the dead. He, he wants to be like Jesus. Yes, uh, Jesus got up from the grave. Uh, he said, I want to receive uh, resurrection power. I want to get up from the grave like Jesus got up. And I want you to know this morning that just as he got up, yes, you can get up. I can get up. Yes, uh, there is coming the trumpet that will Yes, some glad morning. Mm. I gotta sit down now. Okay. When this life is over, mm. yes, I'll fly away and be at rest. Yes, I, I got most stuff on the page, but uh, I don't have more time on the clock. Can I get away from the stage? Yes, I, but my brothers and sisters, I, 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 I want you to understand this today. That wherever you are, there is joy in knowing Jesus. I, 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 I don't know what you heard around town. I don't know what you heard in the street. But I want you to know there's joy yes. in knowing Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. The closer you get to him, the closer you get to attaining what God has for you. He says, I want you to have joy and I want it to be full. Yeah. I, I don't want you to just have some joy, but I want you to have a life that is full of joy. And that's what Paul is getting at here in Philippians as we continue on through the text. And so right where you are, yes. you're watching remotely. I want you to receive all that God has for you today. Yes. As we stand on our feet. Yes, Doors of the church are open. Yes. Lord, we thank you now in the name of Jesus. For your son and our savior, we thank you for the life that he lived. We thank you most of all that he died in our place. Yes, That's why we call 
Friday, Good Friday, because of what was accomplished, not because of how horrible a scene it was, and that it was, but because he took our place, and it's because of his grace and mercy that we're here today. And so I pray that right where you are, you'll receive all that God has for you. Lord, we pray you come into each individual's life that you would allow them to receive your Holy Spirit on this day. Lord, that they may know you. That they may receive you. That they may be a follower of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.